Hello and welcome to this wonderful course of Computer Network. And today we are going to start uh, discussing about your network core part. And in network core, the complete network core uh, can be operated uh, with the help of two switchings. Uh, the first is uh, circuit switching and the second is uh, packet switching. Circuit switching uh, used in uh, PSTN, Public Switch Telephone Network, as we have already discussed this, uh, that it is the, one of the biggest uh, network laid down by engineers for telecommunication. And uh, this particular uh, Public Switch Telephone Network is the, uh, is the example of circuit switch network. And uh, <clears throat> the second uh, type of switching is Second type of switching is packet switching and this packet switching is used in internet uh, which we are going to study throughout our semester because uh, this, this particular packet switching is in our course. But we will uh, discuss circuit switching as well uh, for uh, the understanding point of view. So let's uh, discuss about uh, packet switching first. In packet switching, uh, as I told you that uh, it is used in internet and in packet switching what we uh, do we uh, divide the complete message into n number of uh, message chunks and once those uh, message chunks uh, reach to network layer they become packets so that's why we always call it packet switching because we divide the complete message into packets and then we provide uh, each and every packet a capability to reach to its destination by its own without uh, taking help of other packets it's like individually packet is got the capability to reach its destination so uh, that is what packet is called as you can see on the slide that uh, network core uh, it says mash of interconnected routers which are used for internet they use packet switching packet switching host break application layer messages into packets forward packets from one router to the next across links on path from source to destination each packet transmitted at full link capacity so as you can see at the right side of the slide that uh, this is the internet infrastructure where you can see uh, this is a mobile network this is residential access and this is institutional access and this is network core which is highlighted in blue color this is network core so this part can be operated with the help of uh, circuit switching and this part can be operated with the help of uh, packet switching but uh, in the case of internet this part is operated with the help of packet switches uh, packet switching where we divide our message into n number of packets and then we transmit the data in the form of packets to its destination so uh, it's uh, and in uh, circuit switching we do not divide our uh, message into packets we send the complete data in in the form of uh, stream uh, stream of bytes so here you see uh, this is a computer and again uh, it is considered as a source and this is a destination uh, and uh, these two uh, computers source and destination are connected with the help of a switch or a router and this particular router is uh, also called store and forward switch because this particular router stores the complete packet first of all uh, and, and then it uh, start uh, transmitting that particular packet so that's why it is called store and forward uh, switch and uh, the main name of this particular switch is router so for understanding packet switching first of all we must understand uh, transmission delay transmission delay is nothing but when a packet is uh, of L bit size, when that particular packet is transmitted on this particular link, time required by this particular system to push all the bits of that particular packet into this link is called transmission delay. And that particular transmission delay is called, uh, the formula of that particular transmission delay is L by R, where L 
are the number of bits present in a single packet and r is the transmission rate so r is the transmission rate of this particular link and unit of uh, r is bits per second that means how much uh, bits can cross a cross sectional area in a second so r stands for um, your transmission rate uh, which depends on this particular link which type of link you are using it can vary with the different links and uh, l is the number of uh, bits present in that particular packet so again i'm telling you the straightforward definition of transmission delay time required by a node or a router to push all the bits present in a packet into the link is called transmission delay and its formula is capital l by capital r where l are the number of bits present in a message or in a packet and r is the transmission rate of that particular link and this particular uh, slide also mentions uh, your store and uh, forward um, switches entire packet must arrive at router before it can be transmitted on next link so as i told you earlier that this uh, switch or router is also called store and forward switch with which uh, stores the complete packet first of all which is coming to it and then it starts transmitting that particular packet to the next link and uh, why this uh, happens that I'll, I'll tell you later but first of all let's let's understand this particular uh, diagram and this particular uh, uh, network which we have in front of us this this particular uh, source trying to send three packets to this particular destination and uh, the first packet uh, is uh, transmitting to, to this particular link and it takes l by r seconds l are the number of bits present in this particular packet and r is the transmission rate of this particular link so first packet will take l by r seconds to reach to this particular router i hope you understand this so how much time required by uh, this particular packet or message or um, packet to reach to destination here you can see l are the number of bits present in the uh, packet and r is the transmission rate and we have two links so it will be 2 l by r first l by r is for this particular link uh, to transmit packet from this uh, source to this intermediate router and second l by r is required to push all the bits uh, present uh, in a packet which is completely arrived at this particular uh, router uh, to push on this particular link so the transmission rate of this link is also capital r bps bits per second so uh, time uh, required by a single packet to reach from source to destination would be 2 into l by r so here a numerical is also mentioned over here where l is 7.5 uh, megabits per bits and r is uh, 1.5 mbps um, so one hope transmission delay is uh, 5 second one hope so from this point to this point it will be multiplied with the with 2 the second thing which plays a vital role in this uh, packet switching is queuing delay the first the first one was a uh, transmission delay now the second one is queuing delay queuing delay happens if uh, if arrival rate in bits to link exceeds transmission rate of link for a period of time if arrival rate of the bits exceeds transmission rate of link for a period of time then this this particular router will start accumulating those packets into its buffer and that buffer forms a queue and whatever time a packet has to spend in a queue is called a queuing delay and uh, let's let's take an example that this is the first packet to be uh, transmitted um, on the link on this particular link this particular packet then the queuing delay for this particular packet would be zero but uh, the second packet in the queue 
would find some delay and that delay would be uh, the transmission rate so the transmission delay of this particular first packet so queuing delay for second packet inside a queue would be transmission delay of this particular packet which would be l by r so if if someone asks you queuing delay for this second packet in this queue so it would be l by r the transmission delay of this particular packet is equals to the queuing delay for this particular second packet because once this particular first packet is completely transmitted on uh, in, uh, into this particular link then the queuing delay for this particular packet would be zero so uh, technically the queuing delay for this particular packet uh, the packet number second inside this particular queue would be l by r the transmission delay of this particular packet and in the same way if someone asks you to uh, find out the queuing delay for the third packet in a queue so that would be 2 l by r because two packets are ahead from this particular third uh, packet inside this queue so it's it's very simple queuing delay is the time spent inside a queue and that time is equals to the number of packets are ahead inside that particular queue in front of you into l by r that l by r is the transmission delay of a particular packet so that is how you are going to calculate the queuing delay uh, queuing delay and in the last uh, last slide this uh, if you want to calculate the transmission delay the simple formula is l by r and transmission delay is nothing but time required by the uh, your uh, router or a node to push or transmit all the bits present in a particular packet onto the link is called transmission delay and that is l by r thanks for today and we'll uh, discuss uh, two more uh, delays in the next lecture along with this circuit switching understanding thank you very much